All right. Hey, guys. Thank you guys for joining me, man. We are going to be looking at, can you guess, because we're jumping into a new one. I'm going to give you a minute. Joshua, that's right. You did guess it. Good job. Anyways, guys, um, I know I'm retarded. Uh, <coughs> anyways, guys, uh, yeah, we're going to be looking at Joshua 1 today. And I think it's going to be a good walkthrough. And I think there's going to be some cool things that we can pull out of it. Um, and, and I'm hoping I can really dig up some amazing stuff to share with you guys. Uh, with all of that in mind, let's do a little bit of prayer. And we're going to jump into Joshua chapter 1 today, all right? Thank you guys for... Come in here and let me share God's word with you. Heavenly Father, I just want to come before you today, Lord. So grateful for everything that you have provided me with in my life, Lord. So grateful to be provided with your word, Lord. So grateful to have this, this chance to, to lift up your word, to share your word, to praise you with, with, with this time in Bible study, God. I know that you have no greater joy than to know that your children walk in the truth. God, help us to seek to do that. Help us to be loyal, devout, obedient, hungry, to be hungry for you, God. Thank you for the provision of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we can have this wonderful indwelling that can bring remembrance and, 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 and recreate within us the might of Christ. Amen. Father God, I would ask that this video be a nourishment to your flock. And that it be able to grab the attention of anyone out there still lost to sin, still lost to the, the lies of the devil and the lies of the world and the, and, the, and the hungers of the flesh. Let us speak against that. Let us pull those people into the fold. Let, let us shine the love of Christ to them that they may see everything that's possible at the foot of the cross. continue to uh we continue to ask for your hand to be over those people in florida going through that awful mess down there lord uh and i would just ask that you help to foster within us lord uh, the right kind of love to show others give us your heart give us your eyes give us your love lord that we may share it with others. As always, I pray a hedge of protection and a blood covering around the hearts and minds and lives of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord. Your name is great. Your name is mighty, Lord. Let us walk in it, sing it, and never grow tired of praising it. In your holy and mighty name I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen, guys. Amen. All right. All right, guys. So, as I said... Joshua 1, thank you guys for letting me share with you. Um, God's commission to Joshua is the little subheading on mine. Chapter 1, verse 1, guys. I think this is like our 29th book, all right? Let's go. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, Toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers and to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. 
for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. But you shall pass before your brethren armed all your mighty men of valor and help them, until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you. And they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of the Jordan toward the sunrise. So they answered Joshua, saying, All that you commanded us we will do, and wherever you send us we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words, in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Only be strong and of good courage. I like that, guys. Amen. All right. So as I said, um, Thank you guys for joining me, man. I love getting to share God's word with you. It's been such a rewarding thing to walk book by book with you guys through this stuff. Um, all right, so thank you for joining me as we dive into the book of Joshua. Um, the book opens on the loss of Moses. We could look for days at the topic of authorship and date where this book is concerned and not come to a 100% consensus. What we can say is it was penned almost certainly after Joshua's death. Well, we know it was after Joshua's death, but before Saul's time. So that's not a real great narrow window because Saul's time is 1050 BC or so. Likely the book was compiled and finalized by one later than Joshua. But perhaps, and I feel it's even likely that this was done with the aid of some of Joshua's own personal materials, records, diaries, etc. The book records a time and a leader with the likely hopes of leaving a guide to desirable leadership and, 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 and admirable traits alongside a valuable historical narrative. Before we jump into verses, I want to touch on Christ within Joshua. And you might be asking, well, what do you mean? It's an it's a Old Testament book, Christ is New Testament. But in reading Joshua, we see a uniquely positive portrayal of an Old Testament leader in Joshua. A man who is faithful and obedient, one who's ushering Israel into the promised land. We can see in Joshua's inklings, we can see in Joshua inklings of the Savior to come. Even by name, the Hebrew Joshua is equal to the Greek Yeshua or Jesus meaning the Lord is salvation. Both mean the Lord is salvation. Both battle against forces that are in direct opposition to God. The followers of both Jesus and Joshua continue in their leader's footsteps and battles, taking on the same evil and wicked forces. Joshua was Israel's warrior. In Jesus, we see the fulfillment of this, taking his defense and his salvation to all of mankind who he shields and protects. Upon study, it's clear that Joshua is a deeply fleshed out typology of the Messiah. What's more is within Joshua's fifth chapter, 
we actually have a recorded um, situation wherein we're introduced to the pre-incarnate appearance of Christ, i.e. chapter 5, verse 14, commander of the army of the Lord. You'll see that when we get there. All right, let's look at verse 1, guys. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, All right, guys, so we open on a theological crisis and a real watershed moment in history, particularly Israel's history. With the death of Moses, we have the concluding judgment upon the generation that came from Egypt. Basically, everyone's kind of like, what's the plan? Judgment's in the air, now Moses is dead. Well, chapter 1 provides an answer. We see by the language, after the death of Moses, that the Lord remains faithful to his promise, even upon Moses' passing. We see, we see the title of honor, servant of the Lord, which was built upon the very special role of, that Moses played in God's plans, and we will see that in time be used upon Joshua as well. It will be at his death in the concluding 23rd or 24th chapter of this book. Um, let's look at verses 5 and 6, guys. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. All right, guys, so we are so loved is all I have to say because every elect doing God's will can know beyond a doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that God is always by our side and will by no means abandon us nor forsake us. And I can tell you this for a fact because let me tell you what, man, I took myself to some nasty places, some dark places, some wicked places, some evil places that if you could have got away from God, you would have been away from him there and I wasn't. He was still right there. And this is invigorating for a New Testament believer who is... Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 hold on. This is invigorating for a New Testament believer who is tasked with the Great Commission. See, we are sent forth to do great work, but we can do so knowing that never, never will the Lord leave us to that task alone. Verse 8, guys, let's look at that. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So obviously, first off, that totally reminds me of Psalm 1. How about you guys? It says that you shall meditate in it day and night. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it doth he delight both day and night. Um, let's look at that. Let's look at verse 8, guys. So just like us, if Joshua desired success, he needed to meditate. I.e., he needed to read, recite, ponder, pray, and repeat the word of God. We are called to be loyal. We are called to be vigilant. We are called to be fully accepting of everything God says and informed of just that. Our obedience starts with an unending guest, with an unending quest to know and live God's word. Like Joshua, we must know and accept God, seek and learn his word, and bringing all that to a head in the framework of a life lived for God in sheer obedience. Let's look at verses 10 and 11, guys. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. All right, guys, so this is a lesson that I have had to learn the hard way. We see 
Joshua receive his orders from the Lord. And guess what? He immediately obeys. He doesn't dilly-dally. And that was something, boy, you want to let, let me tell you what, that's something I used to do a lot of. But almost, almost always, and certainly more often than not, delays foster reluctance. And that reluctance and avoidance leads to disobedience. If we seek to do what's good for God, and for that matter, ourselves, when tasked by God Almighty, we need to get on with it. Again, looking at verse 11, let me read that one more time, guys. Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Alright guys, so looking again at verse 11, we have Joshua preparing people for what lay ahead. Adding to this encouragement in the form of a reminder that they were soon to possess that which Father God had promised. That which had so long been looked forward to. This is the heart of the narrative of the book of Joshua. Believers must claim. They must take hold. They must lay hands upon that which God Almighty has promised it. See, the blessings provided to us by God, they are the title, they are the deed, they are the only proof of ownership that we need to grab a hold of what God promises and provides. We just have to walk in the truth of the victory. And it can be difficult at times, but it's also simple when you get right down to it. All right, guys. But to be clear, just because something simple doesn't make it easy to do. Um, let's look at verses 16, 17, and 18. It's the last thing I'm going to share with you guys today. Again, thank you so much for letting me. So they answered Joshua saying, All that you command us we will do, and wherever you send us we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Again, guys, only be strong and of good courage. Oh, I love that. People follow those they trust. The people react to Joshua with obedience. And in turn, they're acting towards God with obedience. See, the book's last chapter really digs in and elaborates on this. But here, on display, we have the inherent and essential connection between faith and obedience. And it is implicit. To be clear, though, in no way does this, this obedience, merit salvation. But what it does is it does give a clear indicator of where their trust is, where their heart is, where their faith is. See, a little faith goes a long way. The requisite qualities for Joshua's leadership and all the inherently good and victorious things that happened with it was twofold. And, and do you want to know what this was, what this twofold requisite quality was for Joshua's leadership to be successful for him and his people. It was this, guys. One, God was with him. Two, he believed that God was with him. That's how simple it is. He walked in what he knew to be true. He walked in what God had promised. God said, I will be with you. I will not abandon you. Joshua said, God is with me and he will not abandon me. It's that easy, guys. No, let me take that back. It's that simple. It's that simple. God promises. God declares. We believe. All right, guys. If you're not subscribed, smash that subscribe button. Man, I drop a new video like this six days a week. And I promise Father God wants us to be in his word. We just read it. That's what he wants. He wants us in his word. He wants us to He wants us to live it, breathe it, talk it, walk it, sing it, scream it, share it. Everything. Everything, guys. He wants us to dream about it. He wants us to he want everything. He just want it needs to be our everything. Haven't you ever been a teenager? <laughs> Or, or, you know, a young adult, particularly a teenager, and, you know, you get that you get that love letter from some boy or girl you're interested in, right? 
And man, you ain't letting a hold of that letter for nothing. You're going to hold on to it. You're going to read it and reread it. You're going to... And all this other stuff, right? That's what this is. You know, you didn't want to let go of that letter because you wanted to... You wanted to smell it. You wanted to look at it and see how their hand right. You wanted to know everything and remember everything about it, right? Because that's how important they were to you. That's how important having them be happy was to you, right? I mean, sure, it don't last long, you know. But uh, but that's, that's the fervor that we have to have for God's Word. We need to treat this like that love letter. To where we're giddy about it. To where we can't wait to look at it again. To where to where we can't imagine not having it. Not looking at it. Not reading it. Not knowing what it said, right? Alright, guys. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, man. Share it if you loved it. If you have any prayer requests, any comments, anything at all, guys. Drop that down here into the comment section again. Um, continued prayers for my cousin Kathy. It would look like there's really some great news in that situation chance to fight this thing, chance to triumph over this thing, um, all glory be to God, right, and, um, like I said, my continued prayers and condolences for the people and the, and the emergency responders and everyone with all that that's going on in Florida, just a, a, a horrible situation, but, um, Anyways, guys, I think that's everything. Uh, I love you guys so much. Father God loves you so much more, man. You guys go out there. Have a blessed day. Tell somebody how much Jesus loves them.